Hello, everyone out there. This video is more for me, for myself, to look back on when I, in the future, but if you feel like watching this, it's going to probably be very long, but you can. I am going to be going through my, can't really see it, but record collection of what I have collected so far after a year and about a half of collecting records. I'll go to my LPs, the 7 inches, and give a little opinions on them, and this is more for myself in the future to look back and see how my collection went now and how it will be in the future. I started collecting on Record Store Day 2012. So April 2012, give it about a year and a few months. Year in May, June, July, yeah, let's give it a year and three months is what I've collected here. So let's go through this. Starting off in alphabetically until we get to the seven inches. Then it goes starts again. Starting with ABBA, Greatest Hits, Volume 2. This is, I grabbed this from my grandma when she was cleaning out her basement of vinyl. There's a lot of good songs in here that you probably know and heard. Knowing Me, Knowing You, Take a Chance on Me, uh, Dancing Queen, what else is on here? Thank you for the music, a lot of ABBA songs, not, they don't have Mom Me or some of the big ones, I think those are probably in volume one, but it's nice, Eightfold, with the picture of the band, and I think those are lyrics, no, that's just liner notes. Yeah, still in good quality, supposedly, original I guess, insert slip with whatever the this is on it, mm -hmm. and on plain black vinyl, not 180 grams, it's plain thin vinyl because it's original. But it's nice, it plays nice, it's good. If you like ABBA, you can pick it up for cheap probably, I just grabbed it from my grandmother. Let's go with the second one. Um, and so I watch you from afar, All Hail Bright Future. Probably one of my uh, favorite albums of this year so far from a uh, math rock band, and so I watch you from afar. This album is fantastic if you read my reviews over on Let's Talk Nerd Culture magazine I write for. I did review this and gave it a perfect 10, because I do think it deserves it. It has some great songs. Big Thanks to Remarkable, like a Mouse of State Golden Trilogy, Ambulance, Kaba Taba Dodika, All Hail Bright Future Song Bright. It's just a fantastic album, and I really recommend you listen to it. If you haven't, and you're into some heaviness, but also with some whiteness, it's on plain black vinyl as well, with the yellow insert, it's the song lyrics. It's very nice, but it's nice. The packaging itself is a little overstuffed, it's kind of ripping through the side, and that's what it's been like since I got it. I don't know, I didn't order it again because this was expensive, it was an import from Ireland, I think, not Ireland, yeah, Ireland, they're an Irish band. But yeah, they're in the back, liner notes again. It's a very nice record, definitely one of my favorites of this year so far. I'm just going to put them over here. Uh, up next. First vinyl I actually bought for my own money, Battles, Dross Clock number four. This is a remix album of songs on uh, their Gloss Drop album. This is Dross Clock. It contains uh, BDG Gang Gang Dance Remix of Ice Cream, uh, Hudson Mohawk Remix of Roll Vice, very good, especially if you like Hudson Mohawk, um, and uh, Patrick Mahoney and Dennis McCain Remix of My Machine, which is my personal favorite on your end. It takes up an entire side. This first one I bought on Record Store Day 2012. There's the inside. Well, I won't make to the cover. A lot of goo. And then on the inside, more goo with that. And there, they need to pull that out. Black record with more goo. Battles Dross Club 4. Very nice remix album. I wish I had all the Dross Clubs, but I didn't start collecting to the fourth one came out, but I do have digital copies. Just yay, pirated. Next. Black Flag. My War. The best Black Flag album, in my opinion. Uh, at the height of their career with Henry Rowland before he had a lead, before he left. I don't know why he left. I don't know the history of Black Flag. I just like their music. That's great songs. My War, especially. Beat My Head Against the Wall. Nothing Left Inside. Just great songs on here. Very simplistic packaging. Just that. And then a white sleeve. But it's a nice 180 gram thick press. With the yellow inside with track listing. Very nice. Not anything to write home about in terms of packaging. It's a great song, great album, best Black Flag album, in my opinion, my personal favorite Black Flag album. And I think it's a lot of other people's as well. Up next. Block Party 4, their album that came out last year, which is very, very underrated. I thought it was their best album since their debut, Silent Alarm. I, this has some great songs in it. It's with catchy beat, well written, it's just great. So You Begin to Lie, 3x3, Octopus, Kettle Link. Ballast, Team A, 
We're Not Good People. The only song I do not like and can't stand in here is Coliseum, which is a horrible song. Which you can, if you saw any Blockbury reviews last year, you know a lot of fans fan. But I have been a Blockbury fan for a long time, and I thought this was very underrated by Blockbury fans. Plus, the packaging is very nice. The lyrics on the back with pictures of Kelly and the rest of the band. This is four on the front. Also, this is very simplistic. The lack of vinyl with the lyrics on the side. Signed to Arts and Crafts Records, which usually only signs Canadians, but they're British. Hmm. Either, but I'm cool with that. Um, what comes up next? Next, I got this for a dollar at the garage sale. Bon Jovi, Slipper Room and Wet. I'm not a big Bon Jovi fan, but I do like a lot of Bon Jovi. And this is by the fair, the one with the best songs. And it's not a whole cohesive great album, in my opinion, but it has some great songs in it. Such as You Give a Little Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, Want the Dead or Alive, and I Die for You are all in here, which are great songs. It's not a, the greatest writing or anything, as you know, but it's nice, and it was a dollar. Plus, there's the lyrics, lyrics on the back, more lyrics, and a picture of a bunch of women washing cars with Bon Jovi. Woo. Then, uh, just pull this out. Black vinyl. Very simplistic. Not thick 180 gram pressing, but it's still a very nice black vinyl. Um, what time are we at? I'm just going to keep this going forever. I thought I'd cut into parts, but yeah, let's see how long I can get this keep this recording for. Up next, came out this year, ah, Canadians from Midland, Ontario, a few hours north of me. Uh, I thought this was here. Uh, this is Born Ruffian's new album, First Marks, takes lots of great songs that I think it's Born Ruffian's best effort so far. Needle, 65,000, uh, what else is on here? Cold Pop, With Her Shadow, my first song, Love Song of the Year came up and that song was released on New Year's Day. And I enjoyed it. And um, one of my favorite songs of the year, also, Dancing on the Edge of Our Graves, which also, if you read my magazine article, I put it as one of my songs of the summer. First, it comes with a CD copy of it. Very nice and done. It's just a digital code. They actually gave me a CD copy. So I have a digital copy, a CD copy, and a vinyl copy. So it's a lot of copies. So yeah, a little CD copy here, so you can spin your car, whatever you want. Very nice. Nice little added bonus room, and it costs nothing more. Uh, then in here, there's a picture of the whole band doing some things, weirdly, and there's the lyrics, and this is a very nice looking vinyl. I got one of the original pink, um, uh, transparent pink vinyl, very nice, and it sounds amazing as well, because it is 180 gram, thick pressing. Yeah, uh, the pinks, I think, were a limited of 500, and then they switched the copying over to orange? I want to say, you can check the paper bag, paper bag, the land paper bag. Yeah, they're signed to paper bag, paper bag records website to see if I'm correct. The list, record store they released this year. The Brian Eno Nicholas Jar Grizzly Bear remix album. Two remixes by DJ Nicholas Jar remixing Lux by Brian Eno and Sleeping Oot by Grizzly Bear. There's the back. That's that way I just read. I didn't know that off my head. I forget which songs it was. But I do think Sleeping Oot is one of the greatest remix of the year so far. And actually one of the best songs overall. It's very well made by, right, uh, by Nicholas Jar's remix. Simple like white packaging, but nice, thick, thick, thick 180 gram pressing here. Plays extremely well, sounds extremely great. It's very short because it is only two songs, but each song was about seven minutes, so what's 14 minutes? About, it's a short, short remix album, but it's nice. Uh, coming up next. Getting into the seas. Childish Gambino Camp. Childish Gambino, if you watch Community, you know, it plays Troy on there. Uh, Childish Gambino's real name is Donald Glover. This, I thought this album was great. A lot of music reviewers, such as Anthony Fantano of the Needle Drop, uh, big fan of him, as you might know, and any music reviewer or anything is a fan of, hated this album. Most album I ever saw him review, but I loved it. I think almost all the songs are great in here. Outside, Firefly, Bonfire, All the Shine. Heartbeat, Backpackers, Hold You Down, You See Me, Sunrise, and That Power. All great. And this is a fantastically sick record. There's a lot of stuff, too. There's the cover. Open it up a little bit. And there's Donald running. And then that. And open it up one more time. And you got Donald in front of trees. Donald. It's a very long record. Uh, then okay, on the front, it's a little booklet. Pictures. I thought it was a lyric sheet the original time, but pictures. 
there's deer, these are upside down, there's a deer, <laughs> stuff, pictures, pictures, a little bit of liner notes from Donald down there thanking his parents and stuff, and here's, it's a double record, side A and side B, boom, boom, black vinyl, very simplistic, very nice, plays well, uh, just take that back into the front, Final is very hard to get back into this packaging sometimes, especially on very big, big fold-out gatefolds here. Fold-out gatefolds, well, nice, are a pain in the ass to take out and stuff. There. Okay, and then last thing from here. There's also a download code I haven't hung on my wall because this can't get me, you know. Here is the last record, side C, contains the rest of the album. And the cool thing that Donald did with an extra side of just leaving it blank, because a lot of artists do when they don't get it, these were a bunch of bonus tracks on the last side, including Freaks and Geeks, My Shine, Not Going Back, and Long Text Message, great songs by him as well. If you like Gambino and you have a record player, I do recommend picking this up. It was very well made. It's all on 180 gram, if I didn't mention that already. Gotta love that 180 gram pressing. They're so nice. I did not close this correctly. Up next. Ooh. Last year, one of my favorite albums of last year, Cloud Nothing, Attack on Memory. Such a nice, heavy punk rock album. Not, well, let me rephrase that. Not punk rock and punk rock, but punk pop, I guess you could say. Like early school Green Day, but a little harder. I thought this was a great album, one of my favorites of last year. The album packaging on the right home about, the simple white covers. Black Vinyl, not even 180 gram, which sucks. But great songs on here. You got, what's on here? The Future No Past, Wasted Days, my favorite song out here. Uh, Fall In, Stay Useless, Cut You, Our Plans. The only song I'm not big on here is No Sediment. I didn't care for that, but every other song in here is fantastic. One of the best albums of last year. I thought it was amazing. If you haven't heard it, I do recommend giving it a listen, especially if you are very pissed off, because it is very pissed off music. Put that back in there. Um, next, this you know album released from this year, Colin Stetson, New History Warfare Volume 3 to See More of Light. Colin Stetson is a saxophone player, so it's excellent in bands such as Bonnie Bear and Arcade Fire, and he's been doing that trilogy here, the New History Warfare trilogy. This is the third one, my favorite of the trilogy so far. Seen some very interesting continuous breathing sax, all done in like one take and a lot of times it's all one instrument. But he does use different sax on different things, also sax, tenor sax, bass sax. But it's a fantastic album. And recently long listed for the Polaris Prize. I think it needs to be short listed because I love it. Here's the first one. First disc. Oh, bam, disc. LP, bam, block vinyl. Change some song. Obviously, Brute. Brute is a very interesting song. Going with some death metal screams from Justin and Bonnie Bear on there. It's very interesting. And I think one of the best songs on there. And then this side contains the longest song, just one song on here, going 15 minutes almost, to see more light, boom. And then this side, the rest of the song, a great album to just listen to. If you want to hear something interesting and someone doing something different with saxophones, because I don't, I guarantee you will not see something, anything like Colin Stetson, because he's fantastic. Next, Death from Above, 1979, You're a Woman, I'm a Machine. One of my favorite albums of all time from Toronto born Death from Above Night Ten. Their only actual album they ever put out besides one EP. But hopefully there's rumors they're gonna be coming back with a new album this year, which oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. This album is fantastic and a masterpiece in my opinion. Turned it out, romantic rights, going steady, get home go home, get down, blood in our hands, black history month, little girl, cold war, your woman on a machine, pull out and sex your results. Oh, such a great album. I need to see them live. I never saw them live. I was going to see them live, but I missed the show. Such great mess. There's the front with the other elephant head. Other side. Great album. Not, nothing packaging-wise, but oh, one of the greatest albums of all time, in my opinion. They got to release new material. I want to hear new material. I need to hear new deaths from above 1979. They are fantastic. Uh, next, parental discretion is eyes. Death Grips, The Money Store. If you watch Anthony Canada, you know he, the first album he gave a 10 to. I don't think it's a perfect 10. I think it's a very deserving 9 from industrial hip-hop artist to Death Grips. It's fantastic, and the vinyl is even better. 
well, actually, no, the album's better. But <laughs> fantastic. It contains some great songs from some of the most experimental music you would have heard last year. Get Got, The Fever, Lost Boys, Blackjack, Hustle Bones, I've Seen Bush, Double Helix, System Blower, K, Punk Wave, Bitch Please, Fuck That, and Hacker. All on here are fantastic. Lyric sheet, so you can actually understand what these MC Ride's saying, because half the time you can't. Then picture of MC Ride pissing on something, because that's the way death gets rolled. Envelope thing and big MC Ride eye. Then the desk. That's a nice, thick 180 gram. If you have it, if you're into interesting and different hip hop and want to hear something different, you probably already heard Death Grips, but if you haven't, go listen to Death Grips. Go listen to this. Go listen to No Love Deep Love. This is the only cut thing available widely on vinyl. Ex Military, the first album was released a little bit, but most sell for about $900, which I don't have. And No Love Deep Web does not sell on vinyl because the cover is Zach Delphinus. Because, yeah, if you want to know about more, know more about that, go search it. Uh, next, Duran Duran's Rio. Got this album also from my grandmother because it used to belong to my aunt because she's a big Duran Duran fan. Also her and my uncle are in the Duran, in the Duran, Duran video for the Reflex, so it's cool. Duran Duran, very poppy, but I enjoy them. A lot of people do not, but I thought they were good. This is in very poor condition, but the record itself, nice, simplistic. Lyrics on the back. This record's in not very good condition, but yeah, it's definitely a good record. I know a lot of people aren't big on Duran Duran that are into like music, basically, but I've loved Duran Duran since I was younger. It might be because I've been raised by my mother, who's a Duran Duran fan, and my aunt, who is also a huge Duran Duran fan. Also, more Duran Duran, Seven and the Ragged Tiger. Uh, not as good as real in my opinion, but there's some great songs in here. The Reflex, book I mentioned already. Uh, what else is on here? Crimes of Passion, Union Snake, Young Tiger. It's a good album. I think this one's in a little better, more better quality than Rio. Yeah, more quality. Nice packaging. Pull it out. Black vinyl. Very simplistic. AD written there as in my aunt's initials. Well, I'm not say her name. But yeah, it's nice. Listen to Duran Duran if you want some nice poppiness. Uh, next, let me just shift the records over to the following. Um, the English Beat, Special Beat Service. The English Beat are a great band. I just recently got into them, and I found this album at Dr. Disc in Hamilton, Ontario. For only two bucks, it was a good deal. There's some good songs in here. English Beat, very great band. Awesome cover, too, one of my favorite covers. And I like it for some reason, and their logo is nice. So, it's a boom, lyrics, boom, lyrics. Boom, black vinyl, simplistic, very nice, very cheap record. You can find it for two bucks, three bucks at most flea markets, record store, used record stores and stuff. It was printed a lot when it was originally released, but it's a great album, definitely something worth checking out. If you do not know it. On next, the Evens, the Odds. The Evens is a band made by uh, what's his name, Ian McKay of Fugazi. Uh, punk band Fugazi afterwards that he made with his wife, uh, Amy Farina. This album was fantastic last year. One of my, another one of my favorite albums of last year. I wasn't big on the even first two albums. I thought they were okay. They have grown me more than when I listened because of, like, the odds. I think this album's fantastic. Definitely worth your listening time. The inside's nice. Picture of underwear that's slightly imperfect. And then the back, pink with some lyrics. And a picture of a flower. Look, they're giving me a flower. And, Black vinyl, with pink on the inside, very nice pressing on 180 gram. Definitely go listen to this album if you want a cool listening experience. Definitely not the same as Fugazi is. It's a lot slower, but it's a nice listening experience for Fugazi fans and non-Fugazi fans. On next, ooh, this one's nice. Explosions in the sky. All of a sudden, I miss everyone. Fantastic pressing on here. The copy I actually got is a little bit damaged. Because I guess it was in the start for a long time, but there's great songs in here. Uh, the Birth and Death of the Day, Welcome Ghost, It's Natural to Be Afraid, What Do You Go Home To, It's a Long Lonesome, Fantastic. There's a kind of boat, front, you open it, there's some water, because I guess it's flooded or something. Uh, first one, music by who's in the band, here's the guy in the boat, like, oh, I'm gonna die, so I'm thinking about some old memories in my life, like watching TV and having a birthday with myself playing piano stuff. Uh, it's a little ripping, as I said. I'm not going to 
take it out, but it's, I'm just simplistic black vinyl on this one. Plain black vinyl, I'm not going to take it out because it is not easy to take out without ripping that package. But the second one, the second sleeve, has a picture of, look, Peter comes rescue him on a boat. Wow, he's having to go dead. And then you take this one out, this is in better quality. And on the front, the third part of the album. And on the back, one of the coolest things I've seen done, I don't know if you can see it like this, if I reflect it in the light. Possibly. Yeah, there you go. They did a laser carving of the boat just staying there after you got rescued. This is fantastically beautiful, and I think it's amazing what they did with this. It's definitely better than just leaving it blank. Between Ch them, them and Chubb's game, you know, they know how to make the exercise nice. It looks fantastic. Definitely, if you're into your post-rock and you do not know Explosions in the Sky, which I see you do, because Explosions in the Sky are one of the biggest post-rock bands out there, also opening to Nine Inch Nails on their new tour. Awesome. Check that album out. My favorite explosion in this guy album. You know, not many else other people. Uh, Fleet Foxes, Helplessness Blue. Folk rock band Fleet Foxes has released this album two years ago now? Is it two years? No, it was last year. Two years ago. Yeah, it's from 2011. I thought this album was fantastic and one of the best folk releases of the last decade. Uh, actually, of all time, I'll put it up there. So many good songs in here. Montezuma, Bedouin Dwest. Dwest? Bedouin Dwest. Bedouin Dress, Sim Solo Bim, Battery Knight, The Plain Bitter Dancer, Helpless This Blues, Lori Alley, Someone You Admire, The Shrine and Argument. Oh, it's fantastic. It, like, I, I do, don't mind Mumford and Sons, but like, this is Mumford and Sons times 20. It's like what Mumford and Sons should be in terms of folk music. It's fantastic. Inside, with some handwritten lyrics, The Gatefold. Uh, Back. I got this at the record, uh, record roll, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Ohio. So boom, nice pressing, all on 100, both are on 180 gram. It's a beautiful record. I love it. You gotta love it. Uh, what comes on the next one? Also, black, but without, ba boom, black vinyl. Oh, such a great album. You gotta listen to it. If, you, if you're, you're a Mumford and Sons fan, you're a Avid Brothers fan, listen to Fleet Boxes. Like, I don't mind Mumford and Sons, but Fleet Boxes is like, pro, 20 times as great as them, in my opinion. Uh, next, Boxygen, Take the Kids Off Broadway. First Boxygen album I heard. Uh, I love Boxygen, I think they're one of the greatest bands currently out there, just starting last year with this. Well, it was released earlier under their own name, but when they were signed to Jaguar, Jag Jaguar, I don't know how to pronounce the record company. There's just some great songs in here. Abandoning My Toys, Make It No Waiting For You, Middle School Dance. There's the Sam and the other guy. I forget the other guy's name. But yeah, this is simple. I think you might have heard, uh, 20, I was going to say 21st Century Excuse me, I know you do not hear King Crimson. Uh, 21st Century Ambassadors of Peace and Magic. Big album this year for them. This is their first album that came out last year. Nice black vinyl. Foxton are fantastic. Indie rock band, they gotta get bigger. They are getting bigger. Uh, they're, I think they're pretty big in Los Angeles, if I'm correct. They're big somewhere. Yeah, great album. Uh, what I was just mentioning. Boxygen! We are the 21st Century Ambassadors of Peace and Magic. Another one of my favorite albums of this year, up there with him, so I watch it from afar. Great songs in the darkness, the destruction on Blue Mountain, San Francisco. Chuggy, oh yeah, we are the 21st Century Ambassadors of Peace and Magic, oh no too. It's fantastic, you might have heard it already, it, it does have a lot of buzz on album, on album, online. Better packaging, some lyrics, a boom, picture of them with triangles over their heads, a boom. Black vinyl, with an insert in the middle, looks nice. Definitely one of the best records of this year's far. Check it out if you have not heard it. It is fantastic, and very Pitchfork approved as well. I'm not big on that. I've been starting to read Pitchfork. I do read Pitchfork. I'm not you know what they say half the time, but hey. Uh. Next. Ghost. Or as they're called in America, Ghost BC. I had to explain it because I didn't want to pay for extra shipment. Ghost BC are a doom metal band. This album was fantastic. I just bought this yesterday. I thought it was improved. In What's it called? In fact, Noctisium was better than Opus. I'm blah, 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 blah. I cannot pronounce any of it. That's fantastic. A lot of it has to do with Satan and lyrics to do with Satan, but I don't think they're actually Satanists. Hopefully not. 
but it is good music no matter what, unless you judge your music by what it's about. There's the band with Pop Emeritus and the Nameless Ghouls, who no one actually knows who's in the band, real person-wise, but there's always speculation. There's the lyrics. Yeah, I thought this was Ghost and proved everything off their first album and made it better in here. Also, nice vinyl. Ah! Red, transparent, blood red vinyl. Beautiful. Beautiful with a little cross logo. Dead people in the back. Fantastic doom. Uh, elements of gospel music on there. Worshipping Satan and stuff. Definitely not to be taken seriously with the worshipping Satan. Because I don't think they're actually Satanists. And I assume they're not. But uh, elements of rock and roll. Elements of stoner metal on here too. It's it's a good album. A lot of people were hating on it because they didn't think it was as good as Opus Epiritus. But I thought it was better. Okay, next. God speed you, Black Emperor. Alleluia, don't bend a cent. I'm about to enter all my Godspeed records. Godspeed is my favorite post-rock band, and probably a lot of other people's favorite post-rock band as well. This is their new album they released. First in 10 years that they released. And was recently uh, shortlisted for Polaris. Uh, not shortlisted, longlisted for Polaris. There's the back. Godspeed knows it's the packaging so, 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 so well. Um, what the hell? Oh. In the front, we have this thing, which supposedly are fucked up film strips, which if you read online. It's a big poster of fucked up film strips. That's not my record player. Fucked up film strips. I don't understand it, but that's half the time with Godspeed. You don't understand it, and also they never give interviews. And uh, we actually don't know who's in the band as well. Well, you can see them, but you don't know what their names are. They never put it out there, but they're from Toronto as well. Local homegrown talent, one of the best Canadian bands. Um, this album is pressed very interestingly. The way it works, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. There it is. It's a bit of a pain in the ass when listening to it, but I thought it was a cool idea. One sec. I have to get that back in. All these came with download codes as well. I just uh, took them out because they're paying the ass getting the records back in. Um, the way it worked is it's pressed on two records, one full-length LP and one tiny 7-inch with drones on it. Uh, first, here's a map of how the album's laid out. And there's a little back with some weird instructions and stuff. The way you first play it is you play this side of the big record, then you take it off, play the first drone off the small 7-inch, and then you take it, the big one again, play that, and then take it off again and play the 7-inch. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's a very interesting concept Godspeed did there with that. I thought it's a great idea. Also, definitely a great post-rock album, great return for one of the greatest post-rock bands of all time, Godspeed You Black Emperor. I put this in the wrong way. I do not know how to load records correctly into their leaves. Godspeed has a lot of packaging and interesting stuff in there. So gotta love Godspeed for that. Uh, next, another Godspeed record. The first, F sharp, A sharp, Infinity. This is probably their coolest packaged record. It's very thin, thin, thin in terms of this, but every one of them has like a different picture. There's like four different pictures you can get. Mine is like a water tower in the back. Just boop, cross. It's like a very uh, unlabeled record. Let's go through it. Picture of a train. Nothing on the back. Then they give you a manila envelope. Inside the manila envelope is this bomb that says repent. They're very political, if you don't know them. And very anti-government, especially in some songs on the Anakwa UXO, which comes up soon. A uh, map of a ruined, the faulty schematics of a ruined machine. They know how to do the fashion well. And when the band went out and flattened a bunch of Canadian pennies, because they're Canadian, they went out to train flattened them and threw them in a small envelope. I don't understand why, but they did. Oh, also forgot this. Little liner notes, kind of weird things. Thus, it's very hard to understand, but they make good music. Uh, and then the actual record with nothing on it. It is literally pure black. No band name, no nothing on it. If you just saw this, you wouldn't know what it is until you play it, and if you knew Godspeed. 
like Godspeed doesn't like labeling it on another on the new three UXO. I don't even think it says Godspeed on the packaging. In all honesty, you just have to know what the packaging is. It's coming up soon. But yeah, if you this is just gonna be Godspeed. The fact that I have a lot of Godspeed albums. I have two more. The best Godspeed album. Ah. Lift your skinny fists like antennas to the heavens. Also known as Levé vos skinny fists comme antenna to the he to heaven, which is French. But greatest Godspeed album, considered a classic by many. Post rock aficionado, nice cover that is just on cardboard. You type press. Here's a map of the album, how it works. And the back is a helicopter with the French title, Le Bouleau. I don't even remember what it was in French. Then, uh, Call this out. First record, some nice art done by I think the lead singer of this guy. Like they're like, no, you have to wear the suit because I don't want to. But then the guy in the sky is like, oh. And then on the back there's some weird pictures of cops and six 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 and a cat. And then my first record, black. Here's storm with storm. And on the back is static. Most of the songs are going over 20 minutes, so they just take them aside. There's a map of a jail on the back. Very interesting. Godspeed are definitely a very interesting band. Even if you don't know their music, just listen to their packaging stuff. It's very interesting. Uh, next, I just decided to contain my favorite Godspeed song of all time. I looked go through the art first. There's a guy getting his hands cut off with some hands on the cover. So they can listen to the heavens. Um, there's some notes. There's a picture of a band. I, I don't think that's actually Godspeed, but it's very old Godspeed, because that's not what Godspeed looks like now. I think it might be a picture of Fugazi in all honesty. I don't know what it is. But it's a picture of some band. I don't think it's a picture of them, though. Uh, then the inside. Front side, my favorite Godspeed song of all time. Sleep. Oh, such a fantastic, moving, like, makes you want to cry song. It's fantastic. And then a little another map of something from a jail. Mm. But that's my favorite Godspeed album and many people's favorite Godspeed album. But there's Kimmy Fist, like, antennas to heaven. Oh, it's such a fantastic album. Uh, what's next? Okay, last Godspeed record. Yanakwai UXO. A lot of Godspeed fans are disappointed by this album. I didn't get into Godspeed until a few years after they called it. Hey, this was their last album in 2003. I didn't get into Godspeed until 2010. But I thought this album was really great, in all honesty. Uh, Motherfucker equals Redeemer. Their longest song at 32 minutes long is on here and takes up two sides little map of something. There's actually no mention of the band name in here, as I was mentioning earlier. Uh, some packaging or something. I think this had a lot to do with 9-11, in all honesty, and Terrorist Attack, because it's their only album to come out after 9-11 until Hallelujah came out last year, with some bombs being dropped on the front. There's a lot, this is a very heavy government one, when they're going about the gov fuck the government and stuff on the end of Motherfucker Equals Redeemer, but First, it's very simplistic, just red on the center. Left side is 091500, which I guess is the date of something. Then Rocket Falls and Rocket Falls on the back. And then their longest song they made, and I think the longest song I have on vinyl by one single artist. It can never come out. Ever. <laughs> Hello. Motherfucker equals Redeemer, part one. Motherfucker equals Redeemer, part two. Fantastic song, long, politically challenged, brown, I and mean, full of anger from Godspeed to the government. Godspeed are definitely an awesome band. Check them out, especially if you want the fuck the government. Listen up, this gal, Al, listen up, listen up, listen to this album. Okay, now we're out of the Godspeed records. Here's a record I grabbed from my uncle, a great album, you probably all know that. Iron Maiden, The Number of the Beast, fantastic. Simple metal album, simple metal. I uh, just metal, no style. Great songs there, Children of the Damned, Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills. There's, uh, what's his name? I forget his name. But nice cover there. I would not take this out of here because it's in a plastic sleeve instead of paper, which I hate, but they did this back in old albums. This is an original copy. Black, but it's a pain in the ass shoving the plastic back in there. So I'm not going to take that out, but great album. Next part of it. Next. Handsome Furs, Sound Capital, with a naked woman in the front. Um, this is Sound Capital, Handsome Furs, are two members of famous Canadian indie rock band, 
Wolf Parade when they went to do some electronica experimenting. They were shortlisted for Polaris last year, lost up to Feist, but it's a good album. A lot of good songs there. When I Get Back, Bury Me Standing, Serve the People, What About Us, Cheap Music, great songs in here. Oh, there's the two guys. Well, the guy and one girl. And then I think this is a cool packaging wise. Little picture of some bridge and details on who the artwork did in the album. Very cool plastic, thick plastic, not like an Iron Man, thick plastic thing with a little bit of liner notes and a picture of a tree on the back. And then you pull the album out and oh, splattered orange. Mmm, delicious looking. Especially with this packaging. It's great packaging. Fantastic packaging. Gotta love Handsome First. It's a fantastic packaging. Definitely this, this album if you're in the mood for a Canadian Electronica artist. Or if you're a Wolf Parade fan and never knew that two of them went off to do an Electronica project. It's very much worth your time. On uh, next. Colorado. Record in a bag. Canadian Colorado. And one of the most interesting, literal, records in a bag. I had a CD copy of this, but when I finally got a final player, I got a final copy of it. Literally a record in a bag. There's confetti and stuff in the bottom. There's stickers. Stuff. It's like a little treat bag of records. This thing's a mess, but I will take it out for you guys. And for myself, I guess. But there goes all the confetti. A boom. Track listing has pictures. There's John Lennon. I'm going the wrong way. John Lennon. For the song Fake Drugs. Um, there's a picture of them jumping. They're great live. Their new album, White Paint, which I have on CD. I'm actually inside there. Hangs with a picture of me at a show. Awesome. There's their name on a beach. There's a little area for you to draw your own thing. There's the record. Nice thick 180 gram pressing. Back into here. The biggest make a mess record. White paint makes a mess too. They got, they know their packaging. This is a cool, one of the best packagings. And the white paint, where every single cover had a different coat of white paint on it. Also, fantastic packaging. They know how to do it. And there's a tattoo down there of a fish, of Juliet. And then a fortune cookie slip. It says, bring us to a Colorado show for a sticker, which I want to do. But I have never brought to one of their shows. I've been to two of their concerts in my life. They're good live, great live. Definitely check it out. If you're Canadian, you probably know Colorado. If you're not Canadian, you probably don't. Surprisingly. Uh, next. Another one of the girls last year. Japan Droids. Celebration Rock. Fantastic. Another Canadian artist from Vancouver. Surprisingly, with the name Japan Droids, that they'd be Canadian. This album is fantastic. A lot of hard rockin' songs. It's like, <clears throat> Like, youth, yeah. So, that sounded really stupid. Songs, but yeah, Night of Wine and Roses, Fires Highway, Evil Sway, For the Love of Ivy, Adrenaline, Night Shift, Younger Us, their biggest song that helps that heaven built, and Continuous Thunder, all great, fantastic songs. I ordered this from their website, and they threw me a t-shirt with it, and an airhead, for some reason. I don't know about the airhead, but yeah. They comes out with a huge lyrics book, full-on book of lyrics. There's the band... Lyrics, there's the band looking sweaty, there's Brian and David sweaty as hell, because they rock. I want to see them live, their show was 19 plus with Crocodiles, it was actually two nights ago in Toronto. Good. Boom, crowd surfing, a lot more in that lyrics book, but you don't need to all see that. Confetti on the ground now from the last Colorado album. Uh, <laughs> simplest white sleeve. This, all on my favorite tape of vinyl. Contradicted that light! Look at that, it's so beautiful. You can see a lot of dust on it when you play it. But, oh, it's so beautiful. That sounds great. Smells great. Sounds great. Plays well. Great album. Definitely worth your time. Checking out second place Entertainment Weekly's best album of the year. And I agree. Usually I don't agree with most of Entertainment Weekly. Big ass album companies like that. But, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, that's Japan, right? Max. Kenny Rogers, greatest hits. I'm not a big Kenny Rogers fan. I like one song in here. My grandma, there's four copies of the same album, so I thought I'd take one off her hands. Because I like The Gambler, like most people. The Gambler's a good song. Uh, fun fact, not this one, but the Kenny Rogers, The Gambler album is the least valuable record of all time, with each copy only being worth two cents, because how much it was pressed back in the day. Fun facts for you. But yeah, little pictures of Kenny. That. Black vinyl. Simplest thing. Kenny Rogers is not very good, but I like that one song, so I have it on here. Because you don't need four copies, I'll take one from you. 
I don't know why my grandma has four copies of the exact same album. Don't question old people, though. A uh, next. Oh, this is a heavy one. The Knife. Shaking the Habitual. This is probably very... looks different, actually, on camera. But the less wacky. This is a thick 3 LP album that goes for over an hour and a half. One of the best albums this year. So experimental. Fantastic. Look at that coverage. Mm. And you open it. Even more mind tricks. Whoa. And then that. Looks nice. Open it again. Mm. Look at all that green and pink. I had, it came with two comics about ending extreme wealth. Ending extreme wealth as it says there. But those are on my wall, so I can't really show you those. But yeah, it comes with three LPs. It's a long album. Very experimental with regular song. And even one side being a 19 minute ambient track is interestingly weird. Definitely not for the faint of heart and those with a short attention span. But it's amazing. I think it's a fantastic album. One of the best of this year as well. Black. Boom. It's a little inside. Uh, they did not skip on the packaging. It was an expensive record at $37. But I thought it was worth it. Then side C, which also comes with, it also came with, like more ruffians, CD copies. Such a long album that actually needs two CDs as well. Long, long album. Definitely not for the pain of heart, but gotta listen to it. Fantastic. Uh, put that back. And finally, side three. Ah. Side E and side F. Oh, it's such a good album. Got to listen. With an hour and a half long running time, it's definitely hard to get through first time, especially with their weird style. But if you like the first track, which I think the first track is A Tooth for an Eye, stick around for it. You'll like the album. If you do not like A Tooth for an Eye, you're not getting anything different. Well, you're getting different, but still very wacky. So you got to like that wacky in your music and weirdness. Uh, next, Library Blesses Summer of Lust. Library Blesses is one of my favorite bands. I've seen them live three times. This is their album, Summer of Lust. That was a CD copy that I bought originally. They're fantastic live. Saw them in the Casper in Hamilton. Very small, little, intimate set with them. Cool talking to them afterwards. Awesome guys. Some awesome pop music. Uh, here's the front with Feathers for Finn. I loved her, and so, sometimes she loved me too. There's a quote. And then in the back, lyrics, very Canadian. A lot of things like Prime Minister's Daughter and the Friendly Canadian. Also very nice. Clear vinyl. Plays well. Sounds great. Definitely worth checking out. I don't think they're very well known. I love them though. They're fantastic. Uh, next. The rest of the records are going to fall. I need to reposition this. Hello? I'm filming a video, so I'm filming a video, so if you wonder who I'm talking to. Okay, that was my brother. I just turned to come in. Next, the Mountain Goats, Transcendental Youth. Uh, one of my favorite Mountain Goats albums, but I had an only copy of Mountain Goats on vinyl. I couldn't find the Sunset Tree or Tallahassee, though. So I decided to get this, because that's some good songs in it, like Amy, aka Spent Gladiator, Cry for Judas, Harlem Roulette. Great songs. Um. Boop, 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 boop. Lying in bed late at night, he could sense all of the evil demonic forces and invisible metal go and death energy that flowed into this world. It's dark. It sounds like a metal band, but it's not. But there's a lot to do with the devil on this album, and Satan as well. I must like Satan. Satan, I guess. Very simple. Very nice album. If you don't know the Mountain Goats, if you're a nerd fighter, you do know the Mountain Goats. If you're not a nerd fighter, you might know the Mountain Goats. Um, that's that. Next, Dirty Ring, Shrines, another album just recently long listed for Polaris. Fantastic electronica album from the duo from Edmonton, Alberta. Some more pictures. Out, lyrics, lyrics, and the inside, uh, peachy beige, splatter vinyl, hands, Going around, let's put his hands better. Hands going around, looks nice. Definitely a great al electronic album. I think it also deserves to be shortlisted with Godspeed and I think, and Colin Stetson and 
And who else do I think? Mets. I don't have a final copy of the Mets album though, but that album was fantastic. I'll need to be shortlisted. Sounds like I'm going on tangible players. Okay. Uh, next. Rush. Signals. I have a lot of Canadian music. Uh, Rush Signals. Not a great Rush album. Actually, probably one of the worst Rush albums. But Rush has always been good. I still like them, even though they're worst albums. I got some for two bucks, so. Contains some good songs in it. Subdivisions, Analog Kid, New World Man, Countdown. Like, cheap album. There's Getty, Neil, and I forget the last guy's name. Alex. <laughs> Works. Black Vinyl. Hello. I actually haven't listened to this on vinyl. I just recently got it a few months ago. I haven't actually spun it. I need to spin it. I have heard it digitally and stuff. Uh, next, for the edition, Sam Roberts, The Inhuman Condition. My favorite Sam Roberts album, their first one. Name, Don't Walk Away, Eileen, Brother Down, Where Have All the Good People Gone, uh, My Love is Freeing, This is How I Live. Oh, great songs in here. Definitely worth checking out. Another Canadian band. I had some, that, this is the repressing that was repressed this year by Paper Bag on a cardboard packaging. Very nice. I don't think any communication has actually been pressed on vinyl before. But definitely worth checking out. They, they still have a few copies on their website. I think only 10 copies. I'll go check it out. I'm trying to interrupt it for something. On transparent blue vinyl. Mmm, that's so good. Catholic Side A works for me. Side B is a little warped, but I don't want to return it because I have no more copies. But it's nice. And definitely worth your time. Wow, we've all, we've gone over 45 minutes long. Completely. wonder if anyone's actually sticking around. I'm next. I just picked this up yesterday too. The new Seagaro album, Connector. Uh, I've never been a big Seagaro fan. I like I Gotta Rich In. I like most people, I thought it was a good album, but I never liked anything else Seagaro did until this came out. This thing took me by such a surprise. It's a lot darker than anything Seagaro has done before. Seagaro are an Icelandic post rock band. You might know them. They're known well. They have over a million fans on Facebook, so that's what they know. Um, this album I thought was great. Just came out on Tuesday, but I it leaked a little earlier, so I've heard it a few times before. Signed to buy it because it was actually because I saw it and I'm like, ooh, ooh I should get it. Uh, black, simplistic picture of something, something. Yeah, you Siguro, not been a big fan of them. Their last album I actually hated. You might know them for the album where Shia LaBeouf is naked in the music video. That's a Siguro song, but off their last album, which I couldn't stand, Ulterior. Because it was way too slow and melodramatic for my liking. But this is dark, stormy, definitely worth checking out. If you're not a Seagirl fan like me, or if you are a Seagirl fan, I think Seagirl fans will like it too. I don't like you saying like that. Seagirl. But, yeah. Next, Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits. Go, Simon and Garfunkel, Paul Simon, Art Garfunkel. Hey, some of the best movies of all time. This is the greatest hits album. I never actually owned a copy of any of the real albums, except digitally. But this, I just want the greatest hits. So many great songs. Miss Robinson for Emily, where I may find her. Foxer, Sound of Silence, I Am a Rock, Scarborough Fair, Homer Bound, Bridge Over Troubled Water, Cecilia. So many great songs. I got this in a flea market, a little bit, ugh, album cover, but it is also present to someone. They sold the flea. Black Idol. Oop. Nice album. You gotta, if you don't know Simon Garfunkel, you gotta listen to Simon Garfunkel. Um, hi. Camera. Hello. There's no one actually on the other end. Uh, spiritualized, sweetheart, sweet light. I'm just gonna close the door now. Spiritualized, sweetheart, sweet light. There's an album that came out last year, which I think is next to a masterpiece in all I honesty. One of my favorite albums of last year mm -hmm. as well. Spiritualized, they're most known for Ladies and Gentlemen, We Are Floating in Space, which is a fantastic masterpiece in album. I think this comes so close to how masterpiece it is. So many great songs. Hey Jane, Little Girl, Get What You Deserve, Heading to the Top, Now Freedom, I Am What I Am, Mary, Life is a Problem, and one of my favorite songs of last year, So Long, You Pretty Thing. One of my favorite songs of all time. It's fantastic. Um, has 
a very weird album cover. It's the title of the first track, which is a one minute instrumental. But very weird album cover. But you don't expect less from Spiritual Eye. Oh, it's such a great album. I hate how it's not a gold gate gold term of final but two sleeves. You know, you gotta listen to it. It's a fantastic album. You can tell I'm being tired of talking so so long. But yeah. Um there's the front with some cars. Some lyrics on the back. Printed on nice white vinyl. Hexagons in the middle. Fantastic. Uh, next peer picture. There's Jason or G Spaceman beaten up for some reason because Mike beats him up. J Spaceman, some lyrics, and uh, that's not a lyric, that'd be a long song. Uh, liner notes. Like vinyl. As well. It's a nice album. It's, it's a great album. My favorite. I think this would be my favorite album of last year. Then either this or the Cloud Nothings record. Probably would be my favorite album last year. I don't know. I like the Cloud I like the Death Grips. Oh, they're also good. Next, my favorite, another one of my favorite albums of this year from a master of sound, Stephen Wilson, The Raven That Refused to Sing, Another Story. Fantastic, very weird cover. Stephen Wilson is fantastic post rock, post rock, a psychedelic rock maker. Taking elements from like the classic people such as Pink Floyd, King Crimson, Law songs go long in here like he did with Porcupine Tree. He he just never stopped making music, I think. And the pleasing fans, he put DVDs of every concert tour he's went on. Oh, and his sound quality is fantastic. This is the thickest records I own. They go over 180 grams. They are 200 gram pressing. They are super thick and fantastic. You gotta listen to this album. One of the best of this year so far as well. Uh, there's a picture of the guy holding the trees looking spooked. That guy with some lyrics. Thick, thick, thick 200 gram vinyl. Picture, picture. It sounds fantastic. It's the best vinyl, best press vinyl I own. Stephen Wilson pressed an amazing record. Um, this album is also very expensive coming as an import. It's $32. But I liked it. The one album that's way too expensive for me is my Bloody Valentine's Day. About 44 bucks. It's way too expensive. There's a band just jamming out, but drawn. More lyrics and the tree of snow. Another nice thick album. The face, I think it's the face. Yeah, it's the face. And then there's the raven on the side of the name. The raven that refused to sing because he refused to sing. But in all honesty, the raven's actually his sister who passed away. That was probably actually mentioned in the first lyric. But check out the music video for that. It's a great music video. If you're watching, if someone's still watching this besides me, it's a great music video. Check it out. Uh, next, we're almost to the end of all my LPs and into my seven inches. Tears for Fears, hurting. I got a thumb from my mother. Not a big Tears for Fears fan. Has one song I love on here, though, Mad World, that everyone loved. Not a great album, but still in shitty quality. No, it's the besides record itself. Record's not nice, but the packaging. Mm. Don't feel like talking about this one very long. Tears for Fears, one good song they have. I don't really care for them otherwise. Oop. Next. One of the greatest albums of all time. Television. Marquee Moon. Fantastic rock punk album with jazz influences and stuff in here. Television only released two albums in their lifetime. This album and then Adventure. This album is a masterpiece. A perfect 10 out of 10. So many great songs. See No Evil, Venus, Friction, Marquee, Moon, Elevation, Guiding Light, and Prove It to Me. But yeah, there's the band in the front. This is also on 180 gram. It's not the edition that contains the bonus track, sadly. But I, I, I guess it's better to have an original, not an original copy. That would be amazing to find an original copy. But uh, with an original, there's, there's the lyrics. There's the band jamming out in the back of the yeah, we're band. They're old now, they're, they're hurting. And you actually see them in the and stuff. Oh, Black Vinyl, 180 grand. Great album. If you've never heard television from Marquee Moon, I do recommend you check it out. I say, and many other people say, including Rolling Stone, it's one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, three more LPs, and then one 12 inch and a bunch of 7 Next, you can see it right up there. Let me see it again. 
Vampire Weekend, Modern Vampires of the City. I went and saw my Vampire Weekend at the Sony Center in Toronto uh, a few weeks ago. I, mean, I guess a month now. I love this new album. I love Vampire Weekend. I think they're one of the best indie pop band, indie rock band, because they're not, they, like most indie rock bands, they didn't get saturated. They don't get saturated like most indie rock bands, like Phoenix stuff had over their time. They have maintained a great sound and interesting sound, and I think one of their interesting albums was dealing with religion and a bunch of other things on it. Unbelievers, Steph, Diane Young, Hannah Hunt, Everlasting Arms, Worship You, Yahe, and Hudson. Fantastic. Definitely go listen to it, but I, I assume most of you listen to it. Most of the people know Vampire Weekend now. Uh, boop, Black Friday, I got a black copy. It's also available on white if you buy it from stores. I think it's on white for some reason at the concert. There's song that on black. They're a good show. There's a good show, too. Yeah, Haim was a mint album, but they didn't. And some other band did. And they were not very good. But that's besides the point. Now I just turn my phone up there. Next, my favorite White Stripes album, the repressing that came out this year for Record Store Day. Elephant. Ten year anniversary. It's been ten years since this album came out. That's insane, because I actually do remember when it came out. I was very young, but I do remember when it came out, because I do know who the White Stripes were. Side A, B, 3, B. This was pressed extremely well. Definitely a big hot seller on Record Store Day. As I saw some of these Record Store Day pictures. Uh, Soldier in the Coffin. Some lyrics in the back. Very nice. Half red, half black. Mmm, delicious. Sounds great too. Pressed fantastically in 100. Pressed fantastically in 180 gram vinyl. I'll try to show the inside again. Boom, Jack and Meg. The Meg seat. Next side contains more lyrics in the back, a drum with some liner notes on it. Some white buttons. They covered everything. I wish it was double red pack the half red but it's black, but hey, color's better than just this. Uh last LP I got here. Wolf Parade. Apologies to the Queen Mary. Definitely Wolf Parade, the greatest album. I'm not a big Wolf Parade fan. Their new album, like Expo 86 and stuff, but this album's fantastic. Pain is the greatest Wolf Parade song, in my opinion. You Are a Runner and I Am My Father's Son, but also other great songs. Same Ghosts Every Night, Dear Sons and Daughters, My Hungry Ghosts. They must like Ghosts. The band that likes Ghosts. Uh, Grounds for Divorce. Fantastic song. Printed on Sub Pop. Like usual Sub Pop records. But in the sun, you see Sub Pop, Sub Pop, Sub Pop, Sub Pop, Sub Pop, Sub Pop. Then, black, Oop. nice, definitely worth checking out. Oh, I forgot this thing in here that has a little context on it. Picture of a square. Because they felt like throwing in a picture of a square. There we go. I'll halt through my LPs within 56 minutes. Next, my 112 inch. 12 inches is the weird size. I hate it. But I had to get it, because this is my favorite song of last year. One of my favorite songs of last year was the Spiritualized Line. Spiritualized Line, great thing. 12 inch, it's long time, 13 minutes. Gorillas, featuring James Murphy and Andre 3000. Do ya thang. 13 minutes and 9 seconds. This came out for record store day last year. Printed on a 12 inch, which is a weird size for a record. But I, they couldn't fit it all in a 7 inch, and they didn't want to use a full out, full I want to say 12 inch, the 10 inch record. They don't want to use a full 12 inch record. But one saw subs in there, blank on the back side, which sucks, but there's just on there. They gotta do more collaborations with James Murphy. James Murphy LP is not the world. And under 6,000 rapping, oh, it's fantastic. Definitely worth checking out the full 13 minute version of the four minute video edit. Definitely, definitely worth your time. Uh, this album was unnecessarily expensive too for one song, but I'm sure that. This is a great song. Yeah, he goes on. He charged me too much for this. That. Uh, now we're getting into my seven inches. A few of them, not many. Most of them from Record Store Day this year. First, Biffy Clyro, Black Chandelier, my version of City of Dreadful Night on the other side. There's two copies of this that were in Record Store Day. One in UK and one in America. One in America has a big hole for the 45. Mm -hmm. Thing to stick in it. The other one contained two different songs in it, I think, in the UK, but 
nice live version of the best song off Biffy Clyro's new album, Black Chandelier. Nice, clear with a bunch of black splatter. Nice album. Packaging is shit though, but it's usually what you expect with a record store day and big bands of record store day. People that go in record store day and know other days of the year, you, I don't like you usually, but they will buy anything. <laughs> As long as there's a band I like in it. Ooh, you're talking trash. Yeah, I am. Next, another extra day in the release. Black Lips and Icky Blossoms. They're cover. Seven Inch. Black Lips covering. Uh, Willie Nelson's Mama Don't Want Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. Whoa. Whoa. Be Cowboys. And Icky Blossoms copying CC and the Banshees. Arabian Nights. I love the Black Lips. Not big on the. Icky Blossoms, one I'm not a big Icky Blossoms fan either, I do love Fox Clips though. So, minor note thing that they threw in. There's the 7 inch on ladder. Hello? Hi! I'm filming a video, so I'm not just talking to myself. Okay? I'm filming a video, so I'm not just talking to myself. Yeah? That's what I get for filming around this time, because it's 5 o'clock p.m., which is when everyone starts coming home. And I had the day off, and there's the phone. Fuck it off. I'm not getting that myself. Continue to race. On next, Hamilton Band, The Dirty Nail I saw them live two weekends ago. Fantastic. Love those guys. They're cool guys, too. I talked to them. Fantastic. They need a full album, but they have this, and then they have a split with Northern Primitive. It's fantastic. Little Metal Baby Fist. Very hope and hate type vinyl. There's a little tiny seven inch, a little bit of baby system on the side, even stone on the other. Definitely worth your time listening to. The Dirty Nail are fantastic and need more support. Definitely check them out, especially if you're in Hamilton. Go see a show, they play at the Flash Show. They're very cheap. On next, last year's record today release. Oh, Feistadon. Mastodon and Feist got the other. Feist covering a Mastodon song. Mastodon covering a Feist song. No extra stuff or anything like this. Just the record. Cool stuff. Not great songs, but very interesting to hear. Mastodon song done by Feist and the Feist song done by Mastodon. Very different. Next. Double 7 inch. Husker Do. Amusement. The first Husker Do song ever released here on Double with, uh, the first two best the Husker Do songs, which I think, actually, I think it's the first four. Also, I don't know about the other the next two, but four of the first songs from Husker Do, Statues, and Amusement on this tiny 7 inch. I'm getting tired of talking. Whew. And on this 7 inch, over here, we have. Fighters Cramp and Let's Go Die. And it's cool, especially if you like Husker Do. Check out their original EPs and stuff like this. Definitely different style than the usual Husker Do. Back from what the, if you know, like Warehouse Songs and Candy Apple Gray. It's a lot different, but very definitely cool. Next. Again, with the library voices. Generation Headclap 7 inch. This album is one that uh, album matched up before I had a record player. I had Summer of Lust, I got Summer of Lust afterwards, but when I ordered Summer of Lust on CD through their website, they decided to toss in this little 7 inch for me. I had no idea how to play it. I didn't have a record player back then, but now I can, and it sounds great. I had Generation Handclap on one side, and the Kitchen Party remix on the other side. Transparent and yellow, very nice. Good job, the library voices. As I said before, check them out. Definitely a good song on that album as well. So much live for voices. And next. next. Michael Jackson. Beat it. Best Michael Jackson song in my opinion. I love Beat It. This is an original copy as well that I got from my uncle. It was a Michael Jackson fan. Boom boom. Hot vinyl. Nice looking. You know you're Michael Jackson. I'll have to explain anything about Michael Jackson. Next, a split. On a picture disc. Misfits and the Lemonhead Skulls. Skulls was originally a song by the Misfits on this side, and then if you switch it, a Lemonhead cover of the Misfits on Skulls. Nice thick picture disc. Very cool. Skulls is a great one of my favorite Misfits song. 
And hearing the Lemonhead cover is cool too, because I never even knew they did a cover. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, next, another seven inch from this year, Nick Cave and the Bad Feet. Animal X. This is an unreleased B trap, well, now released, uh, a B side from their new album. I wasn't thinking their new album, but I wanted to hear this. I grabbed the picture disc. I actually think it's one of the best songs. It's a lot better than most of the songs in this album. I thought they should, they should have put it on. But I thought this was great. It has Animal X in the front and then the exact same song in the back. For some reason. But hey, it's better than having a blank back. Also very craft packaging. Like, stop, Marcus Pretty Company, stop with this craft packaging, please. Because you're charging the same price as a regular record and giving us a lot of craft packaging, so please, stop. Next, another oh, local Hamilton band. <sighs> New Hands. This is whichever way you'll have it with B-side Tulips. This is great. New Hands are a great band from Hamilton. I've seen them a lot twice now. Uh, whichever, mine is actually pressed wrong. Side says whichever way you'll have it. Act is two ups. Side says whichever way you'll have it. But yeah, very home type wrestling type thing. Definitely check it out. You can learn from the band camp. If you're in Hamilton, you can go buy it from, uh, Dr. Disc. Or cheap these or any of those Hamilton record stores. Here's one that says first, be exclusive on it, because for some reason they need to do that. Another crap packaging stuff with it. But this is Phoenix's Enter Phoenix. Definitely best Phoenix song off the new album. I, I was excited for the new Phoenix album with this song, but it kind of let me down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, entertainment on one side, on the back, very small 29 seconds of a bunch of Asian kids humming the background vocals. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but that's the thing on this. Almost through the seven inches. We're almost done this video. Wow, I've been wanting to film this video for a while as well. Down next, Sharon Van Etten. We are fine with the side, second side of Hotel to Tango. Sharon Van Etten, singer, star, a match, night, nice. go listen to her. I'm not going to explain any more. Uh, two more to go. Next, another record starting release from this year Black Keys and the Stooges. No fun. The original Stooges. Stooges song. On this side, Black Keys. Wow! There it goes again. With the Black Keys cover. On the other side, someone's going to give me shit for that if they watch this far. But it's not that great. I didn't actually really like it. Stooges song is good, obviously, but I didn't like the Black Keys cover. Hmm. I bought it, but I have it. Still. And finally, we're almost there, everyone. The last record. St. Vincent. Crocodile and Grot. Seven Inch. On Red Vinyl. Woo! Some harder songs from St. Vincent. This record is hard on Crocodile. But a one -na 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 a lot heavier than anything else he's ever done. Definitely worth your time checking out. So there is all my records. Bob, boom. That was a long time to get through all that. But I did. For myself, for anyone else who decided to watch this, thanks for watching. If you did, thank you. I should do another one of these within a year. It'll be longer. One every year? I'll probably do that. Goodbye. Signing off.